In this video, I'm going to continue using a previous project that I started, but I wanted to talk a little bit about as far as movement options are concerned. Now, when you're dealing with movement options, you are going to be creating a script that you are going to want to associate with the element that you want to have move. So in this case, just to show you here on the default here that I made, one of the things that I set up as a basic movement here was being able to move this back and forth. Think all a Pong type of design here. Now, just to show you here, let me go ahead and stop that. And let me click on this sprite here so you can see what I had to add here. First off, I did add a box collider 2D so that whenever the ball hit it, it would collide. But then also I had to make a script as well. So I called it plank horizontal move script. So the way I organize my projects, and it's up to you, is in my assets folder, I actually make a scripts folder. This is not the default to Unity. Could you technically just throw all of your scripts into your asset folder? You could if you wanted to. I just think it makes it a little bit more organized. So I'm going to go ahead and double click just to open up here. And let's talk a little bit about the C sharp that we're seeing here. Now, because of the fact that the plank pretty much needs to be listened to every frame as far as what the user is doing, we are going to be writing this in the void update. Uh, function here. Now, the first thing is, is I want to talk about the actual lines that you're seeing here. So really in its default format, what we are doing is we are doing if transform and we're translating this this right here is the default kind of core element that you are creating here. Now, what goes into the parentheses is going to change based upon what you're actually working with here. So for instance, what I wanna say is if a specific key on the keyboard is pressed, I wanna have it translate or do something as far as movement is concerned on either the X, Y, or Z axes. So to give you an example here, we already had two in place here. So what I'll do is I will actually come back. I'm going to comment that out just to leave it in there. But if we come down here, let's take a look at what we already have here. So right now we're listening for an input of two keys, either D or A on the keyboard. And any time that it does that, we are setting the speed, either five or negative five, to move it back and forth, multiplied by time dot delta time. So this is seconds. But then again, remember up here in translate how we have x, y, and z. Notice the comma at the end of this. So this is actually controlling the x value here. So that's how we're getting, if I come back into our game here, and I use my a and d key, this is how I am getting the back and forth here. But as you notice too, first off, I kind of have to almost get it on the edge here or things like that as far as moving the ball around. Now I could take this further, you know, as I continue on, I could maybe make it that every time the ball bounces, uh, the player gets 10 points. How long can you keep the ball in the air? So another thing that I might want to do here is what if I wanted to do maybe controlling up and down instead? So I would say if input get key, and again, I'm putting in a string value here. So if I'm using A and D, I'm going to use W to go up, and I'm going to say transform, translate. Now I want to jump back a second to show you here. Remember, you are working in a 2D environment. Really, in the grand scheme of things, we're only working with X and Y. So you can see here when I'm moving up and down, you can see the Y position changing there. So I'll control Z that for a second. When we're working in a 2D environment, we really don't deal too much with Z. So in this example here, I'm going to need to set my speed in 
the why section of my method for translate. But to get there though, I can't just start like I did here because it's going to assume X. So what I need to do is I actually need to put in zero comma and I'll say five times time delta time. So there's my Y value. And then to finish off the statement, I'm going to put the Z in there. It's good practice here. So at this point now, what I'll do is I'll hop back over into the game here. It's going to take Unity a second to update. So let's take a look here and see what I got going on. OK, so no errors. That's good. So I can move up and down. So there I am moving up, kind of stopping it. But I can't move back down here. So let's go ahead here. And once again, I can do something like if input get key. So if I was using W, I'll use S. Transform. Translate. Again, we're focusing on that Y value. So time dot delta time. But remember, you can't leave off the Z value. Now, the only other thing I'd like to point out here is a difference. So you translated as far as moving the object up, down, left, and right. However, there is another option here where you can see that I use the Q and the E key, where once again, this is where the Z value comes into play, where I'm actually rotating the object. To take you back a second, when you're looking at rotation here for an object, notice that the rotation is on that Z axis. So this can add a little bit more as far as your overall game design is concerned. So let me make sure, okay, so we saved that. So let's hop back into our game here. Now let's see what we can do here. So it bounces, I can bring it down, but I can maybe start to move it. And now you can see that I've actually got a little bit more activity here. Now, depending on how you want the player to interact, negative five and five are kind of the defaults as far as speed is concerned. Whenever you're dealing with seconds, you can up that, you can lower that if you so choose. But this is some of just bare bones basics of getting a little bit of movement. And again, because the object that I want to be moving is this plank here, that's why in the components I added it as far as that specific object.